don't think it's as spooky as your music. Um, <laughs> look, in Medicare Part B, and we're talking about Medicare Part B, so it's the injectable drugs. Right now, Medicare pays what's called an average sales price, so we pay an average price across all the sales in the U.S. market. What the administration is proposing to do is to bake into that average price the average across the OECD countries. Um, we know a lot of those drugs are sold for less money uh, in Europe right now, and we want to make sure patients here are getting the same deal that European patients are getting. We've long talked about having a world price for developed markets. Um, this is going to move the, the industry in that direction. And also remember, when it comes to Medicare Part D, these drugs are not subject to competition. Right now, the government is a price taker. We've also talked about subjecting that market to the same kind of price competition that we have in Medicare Part D, where different plans compete with each other to try to get better deals in those drugs. The industry's resisted that, moving those drugs into what we call a competitively bid system. Um, so maybe they'll rethink that, because ASP, the way we currently pay for those drugs, is a price-fixing model right now. It's just a very high price. Okay, so this is a negotiation? That's the way, well, that's the way to do it. I mean, that they, okay, so just, it's, it's too simplistic to say that we're going to import price controls from the rest of the world. Because you, you're not for those. I mean, th those are, are a negative for innovation and drug development. But, but I've started to come around well, watching it the way some of our companies here sort of game the system. They get a lot of good deals with patent exclusivity and to recoup all their, their losses when they develop a drug. But I think that sometimes they, you know, that's not good enough for some. They, they want even more. So if we could truly do it the way you said, where use our, bar, our, our buying power as the government to lower prices, that would make sense. But just importing what they do, uh, price well, controls. This is ahead. a very old pricing system. You're not, you're not importing the price controls. You're taking an average of all the sales across the OECD markets. And do you're they control it. them over there, though, Scott? I well, mean, but they're... you're adjusting it for GDP per capita, so you're adjusting it for the purchasing power across different nations. Remember, this system, ASP plus 6%, and I was here when we put it in place uh, more than a decade ago, it was put in place at a time when these biologics in Medicare Part B were what we call single source drugs. There was only one drug in each category. There was no competition. We're now in a world where there's not just multi-source drugs, meaning there's multiple drugs within each therapeutic category, but there's also biosimilars, low-cost biosimilars. But yet we're not taking advantage of that competition by having these drugs competitively bid, by having health plans be able to negotiate prices. I, I defer to you on this. So you're, you it got a very chilly reception obviously, from the, the pharmaceutical industry, but you're, you're good with this. You think this is the way to do it, and I, I, you're not an anti-competitive uh, guy or, or someone that wants to cap drug prices at all, I don't think. So that, well, you're okay with this. It's this is disruptive. a good idea. It's disruptive, and it's going to nudge the pricing model in the right direction. If you look at Medicare Part D, which is the small molecule drugs, uh, in many cases, American patients, American seniors, are getting a better deal than uh, patients in, the, in Europe because that's a competitively bid market. Health plans compete vigorously to get good deals on those drugs. And I was on the other side of this. I can tell you some of the prices that we get in Medicare Part D um, are lower than the prices that patients in Europe are getting those drugs for because of the vigorous competition. There is no competition in Medicare Part B. And quite candidly, the industry has resisted subjecting that market to competition. Now, I've long told them that ASP, the way we're paying for those drugs, is a price-fixing model. They were happy with that when it was being fixed at their price, at a very high price. But a price that can be fixed at a high price can also be fixed at a lower price. They would be much better off moving that into a competitively bid market um, and this might much nudge them in that direction, but at the very least, in the near term, it's going to help American patients get lower costs in their drugs. Scott, I like what you do. You, you come into these things with negotiations. <laughs> this reminds me an awful lot of what you did with the vaping industry, basically saying you're going to work with us or you're going to face the consequences. Is, that, is this a series of negotiations you're doing with the industry? Well, the secretary is leading this charge, and I, I think he's very serious about implementing this model, and the, and the president is as well. So this, this is a serious proposal that they're going to they're gonna pursue um, through rulemaking, and they have the authority to do it. Uh, I think an alternative, if the industry doesn't like this approach, would be to try to move those injectable drugs into a competitively bid system. So they do have an option. They do have a choice. They've resisted that. That's been an idea that's been on the table and one that's been put forward by the secretary as well. Um, this is going to help patients get savings in the near term. Uh, this is something that can be implemented in a reasonable period of time. Uh, and, and try to move towards a global price. Remember, these drugs are being sold uh, in Europe at much lower prices uh, than they are to American consumers. And, and these are developed nations. We've long talked about having a, a global pricing system where you have one price for developed markets, one price for middle markets, and one price for the developing world. And the industry said they support that, yet they're still selling these same drugs at very low prices in Europe 
relative to what they're, they're selling them to American consumers. This is going to put pressure on that pricing model and move towards a global pricing system. We know uh, most, of the manuf or most of the drug companies are opposed to this. Is there anybody you think is, uh, is a good partner at the table who's been willing to work with some of these ideas? You know, I think as, as these ideas get implemented, and there's other proposals um, you know, that the Secretary has been working on, as these ideas get implemented, I think that the industry is going to start to, um, you know, start to negotiate and, and start to try to work uh, more co cooperatively with the administration on some of these ideas. Because there are things that are longer term that we could be working on together. Um, I think as we start to implement some of these things, they'll, they'll realize that you know, they might do better by trying to work cooperatively with, with the administration on this.